Clashes with Palestinians in Jerusalem have deepened a political crisis in Israel. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett's fragile ruling coalition lost its one-seat majority earlier this month when a member of his own party defected. Now it faces a new mutiny. The Arab Ram Party suspended its membership in the coalition to protest the government's handling of the clashes in Jerusalem. And rockets have once again been fired between Gaza and Israel less than a year since the last crisis that left almost 300 people dead. The Israeli prime minister is trying to hold his government together all while attempting to negotiate an end to the war in Ukraine. And Naftali Bennett joins me now for an exclusive interview from Tel Aviv. Welcome back to our program, Prime Minister. Welcome to this first interview with us um, and the international TV, I think, as Prime Minister. Not a great moment for you. Your government is hanging by a thread. Do you think you can remain Prime Minister? Well, I think it's uh, vital uh, for Israel to keep the stability and the, the success of this government. Uh, Israel's experiencing the highest growth in the uh, advanced uh, economies, uh, better uh, activity pretty much on every uh, vector. But I, I want to tell you that our government is a unique uh, e experiment. Uh, it's the most diverse government in the history of Israel, uh, religious and secular together, right and left, Arabs and Jews. And it transcends Israel itself. It's a experiment in fighting polarization and, and having decent people that have different views working together. And I'm convinced that, uh, that the members of this government and the Israeli public, for that matter, want it to succeed, which is why I think it will succeed. Well, then, what are you going to do to ensure that it succeeds? Because, as I said, one member of your own party defected. Uh, that was earlier. And now um, the, the, the Ram Party, the Islamist Party, in fact, has suspended its cooperation, not ended, suspended. What are you going to do to, I don't know, change the situation that's caused them? And it is the reaction of the Israeli government to the clashes, Temple Mount and elsewhere. Well, first and foremost, I can tell you that all of the my security decisions regarding uh, actions on Temple Mount or uh, with Gaza are in, uh, not political. I take the decisions on the merit, what's right for the security, what's right to do. I'm not going to change that. I'm not going to change my uh, defense-related decisions because of uh, p political considerations. I think uh, and I expect all the members of the coalition to step up to the moment. We knew it was going to be hard. We knew that when you put uh, secular and religious together, right and left, and Jews and Arabs together, there are going to be bumps in the road. But that's the challenge, and uh, I think that there's a unique opportunity for the first time ever in Israel where there's a, a Arab leader, Mansour Abbas, who is uh, divorcing the nationalistic elements from simply taking care of the Israeli Arabs. And I hope uh, he steps up to the plate uh, and his people. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he might say the same about you and, and the government, hoping that you will step up to the plate as well. There, there are something like 14 people on each side now, from Israeli side and from the Palestinian side, who've been killed in these latest clashes. And you say your defence and security policies are devoid of politics. However, this is a picture that the world has gotten used to now. It's constant cycle of killing, bloodshed, all sides really, really in desperate dire straits, collective punishment, and, and just numbers, huge numbers of dead regularly in Israel in 2022. So that's the fact. And there's no, there doesn't seem to be any attempt to negotiate an end to the actual conflict. I just wonder whether you're spending any energy and political capital with this diverse coalition to actually try to end this conflict? Well, first of all, the way uh, the facts were presented uh, is not accurate. Uh, Israel is peaceful. And about a month ago, unfortunately, a new wave of terror was uh, uh, thrown upon the Israeli public. Uh, we lost 14 people in four different uh, terror attacks in Beersheba, Khadera, Bnei Brak, in Tel Aviv center, where uh, Arab uh, Muslim terrorists, uh, some of them affiliated with ISIS, just came with rifles and started shooting people on the street. This is unacceptable. So I, I object to the notion of, of uh, 
uh, you know, both sides know uh, when, when they don't attack us, we have no issues with them. But when they do attack us, I have to fight back and hit them at their terror bases. And that's what any leader would do. And that's what I'm doing. Now, regarding the broader picture, look, um, you know, I'm not going to take experiments on the security of, of the Israelis. Uh, last time in Gaza, we did it about 15 or 16 years ago. We handed Gaza over to the Palestinians. We pulled back to the 67 lines. We pulled out and expelled the, the, the Jews living in Gaza. And what we got in return is hell. Tens of thousands of rockets shot at us. I'm not in the business of uh, playing experiments on the Israeli pe people. What I will do, and I am doing, is people to people peace, bottom up, getting more jobs for Palestinians, better paid jobs, improving the economy. That's what I believe in. And I have to say, the uh, Palestinians are experiencing unprecedented uh, prosperity. The jobs issue that you've just said is jeopardized because there has been an, a blockade, uh, you know, against some towns leading into Israel. So Palestinians say that that doesn't help them with the jobs. But what I want to ask you is, when you say people to people, let's just take what's happening, you know, on, on, on the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif. When the world sees and when Palestinians see and when your region sees Israeli soldiers inside that, that mosque, it creates a lot of tension, a lot of unease. Why do you allow Israeli soldiers to go into that mosque? Yeah, well, Christia, uh, there you go again, starting the story in the middle. But the actual fact is that <laughs> last Friday, at about 5 a.m. in the morning, roughly 300 uh, uh, Palestinian rioters entered Temple Mount Mosque with uh, uh, explosives, with stones, they began desecrating their own mosque, burning, uh, throwing stones, and preventing about 80,000 decent Muslims from going to pray. My responsibility as uh, Prime Minister of Israel is to provide freedom of prayer to everyone in Jerusalem, including Muslims, which is why I had to send in policemen to remove the rioters, and it worked. Indeed, 80,000 Muslims went on later to uh, pray peacefully. So. You know, w when faced with violence, you have to act tough. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, you say, there I go again. Um, clearly, there's violence. We all watch it. We can see, uh, we can see what happens. But let me now quote your own, your own Israeli security people. Again, the context. The West Bank has been occupied since 1967. Settlers are allowed to... To, to be there, it is a minority, I know that, but they're there and they are violent, this minority, and it is generally deemed illegal by the rest of the world, the settlers in occupied territory. But that's a background to what I'm going to quote to you. Major General Yehuda Fuchs, who's the commander of your Israeli troops in the West Bank, is he not, Major General Yehuda Fuchs? He said in an interview with the New York Times um, that he was concerned about what he called settler terrorism and was exerting a lot of effort to avoid it. He said his job is to make sure both Israelis and Palestinians are safe. So if he says that, what is your response to that? No, what you've been projecting is blatantly false. Uh, the, why the do you say that? Overwhelming majority. I'll tell you why I say it, because it's a, a lie, simply a lie. No, the overwhelming sir, you can't, majority you cannot of the half say million that to Israelis. Me. Let, let me you finish. You cannot tell me I'm uh, lying. Christian, Mr. I, I Prime can. Minister, I well, said well, a minority of the extremists. And... That's what I said. That's uh, what well, I it's said. it's a tiny minority. That's what I said. A tiny minority. And I, I object the uh, symmetry that uh, you're trying to create here. Because out of There's half no a million symmetry. I'm talking about uh, good your Israelis, own generals. decent... De could I, could I finish the sentence, yes. uh, Christiane? Out of half a million Israelis that are decent and law-abiding Israelis living in Judea and Samaria, there's several hundred, perhaps even less, uh, uh, who uh, apply violence from time to time. But who's getting murdered? We're seeing Palestinians murder Israelis. We're not seeing Israelis murdering Palestinians. And, and that's why there's no symmetry here. And I also object, these are not occupied territories, they're territories in dispute. And we have claimed to our own uh, uh, place as well as them, I get it. 
No one's going anywhere. We have to figure out how to live together. That's my job, to provide security for Israelis, uh, dignity for Palestinians. I'm working on that very hard, and we're succeeding. The problem is that the Palestinian leadership is, is totally corrupt, incompetent, so we have to do the job because there, there's no one to work with on the other side, and we have to uh, take care, and indeed, we're adding jobs, better jobs, but at the end of the day, uh, my utmost responsibility is to provide security to the Israeli people. Mm, I, I'm, I'm really sorry, but your own, you know, ministers from the past say that that's not fair. There is a Palestinian authority which is a partner in peace. However, we're not going to conclude this today, but I want to ask you about Ukraine. You have uh, been mediating. You went to Russia. You talked to President Putin. You've spoken to President Zelensky. Can you tell me where those efforts are right now? Well, at the end of the day, um, there needs to be a strong will, uh, primarily of, uh, of uh, you know, both sides, but uh, I am at the service of uh, President Zelensky, at which point he will want us to re-enter serious mediation. Um, and at the end of the day, he has to decide the fate of his own country. Uh, in, in various instances, uh, he, he asked me to go uh, and, and uh, meet uh, the other side and uh, meet uh, President Putin in order to solve local problems or try and achieve uh, an end to the, to the war. Um, I hope we will see an end to the war as soon as possible, but it's not looking great. It's not. And, and, and I believe um, when you met Putin, he said defeat is not an option for him, and he was quite keen on pursuing, as we've seen uh, since your visits, this war. But I do want to ask you, because, you know, it's notable that while Israel has condemned the, the invasion, you've not supported sanctions. You yourself do not. I mean, you avoid criticizing Putin or Russia. You leave that to your foreign minister. I wonder if that's a posture you can still maintain after Bucha, after President Putin actually honored the units who are believed to have carried out the atrocities against, against ordinary civilians in Bucha? Well, uh, actually, we've condemned uh, uh, Russia's aggression uh, many times. Uh, we voted at the UN uh, together with the United States uh, to condemn uh, Russia's actions. Moreover, we're, we're actually doing stuff. Uh, Israel was the first country in the world to send a field hospital to Western Ukraine. This field hospital is still operating. It's uh, treated thousands of Ukrainians in distress, saved lives. We're uh, sending over uh, loads of uh, airplanes to support uh, Ukrainian humanitarian areas, and we'll continue to do, do so. I'm uh, also determined to not allow Israel to become a bypass to any form of uh, sanctions. I will say that uh, I, I, uh, I know that in order to mediate later at the, the right moment, uh, we do need to continue to, to preserve uh, lines of communications with uh, Russia as well. Otherwise, we won't be able to mediate. Mm. I see what you're saying, and I know that you have a deal with Putin. You have said that Russia is our neighbor because they control so much of Syria, and you have a deal with him to bomb and take out whatever you consider enemy action inside Syria. I guess my question is, is that local deal worth the bigger picture of what, you know, Russia is doing in Ukraine and threatening democracy in many parts of the world, not to mention human civilian life? Well, there is no deal. Uh, Israel retains uh, freedom of action uh, in our area. We have Iran, who's always trying to uh, surround us and uh, build up more and more rockets that will threaten Israel's... Uh, um, population centers. We're not going to allow that to happen anywhere, uh, including Syria. As I said, we're very clear about uh, Ukraine. We know uh, and, and uh, are, you know, part of the efforts, in fact, leading some of the efforts. I can tell you also Israel has accepted into, into our uh, state thousands and thousands of refugees, Jews and non-Jews alike, and we're taking care of them. Uh, and as I told you, we've treated thousands of patients on the ground. We were the first country to set up right. with the, the uh, hospital, the field hospital, with the best of Israel's uh, uh, medical staff, the best uh, equipment. And I'm proud about that, and we're going to continue doing that. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, thanks for joining us.